Welcome to this edition of Water Drops, where today we'll be talking about importing info drainage models into InfoWorks ICM. So to start off with a quick level set, I'll introduce both of these programs. Both of these tools are legacy Innovise tools, now Autodesk Water Infrastructure Tools. And while both of them handle stormwater and model stormwater systems, the intended use case for them is a little different. Info drainage is intended to be a stormwater design tool for those site scale drainage design projects for stormwater permitting purposes. Whereas InfoWorks ICM is more commonly used by cities or municipalities for modeling their entire stormwater system or master drainage plan, again for a larger scale type of area like a city or an entire watershed or municipality. So why would one want to import an info drainage model into InfoWorks ICM? Let's look at some of the benefits of this type of workflow. So if you are a stormwater infrastructure owner and you are in charge of maintaining your city's stormwater master plan, uh, anytime there's new developments happening in your jurisdiction, you might need to update your master plan to make sure that it's not going to have any negative downstream effects on the existing stormwater master plan. So it's important to have easy ways to update your existing hydraulic model for that citywide or municipality-wide system and leverage some of the data that developers might already be creating in terms of a smaller stormwater model for a new site development or a new housing development. On the other side of that coin, consultants who are actually doing the stormwater modeling for those new developments or those site scale drainage design type of projects might be looking for ways to more easily tie into existing stormwater networks. So today there's two different mechanisms that we'll look at as far as updating a stormwater master plan in InfoWorks ICM with new data from Info Drainage. So the first one we'll look at, there is a direct import into ICM from an info drainage file type. So we'll start there, we'll import info drainage data, we'll show you how to connect it to an existing ICM node. The second option is to simply just import a hydrograph from an outfall in info drainage. So first we'll run the simulation in info drainage and we'll generate that outfall hydrograph. And we'll copy that information into an ICM inflow at a node. So this is an example of a city's stormwater master plan. And there's a few different components of this master plan that I'll just point out and kind of introduce us to. Up in this area here, you can see sort of our traditional one-dimensional stormwater infrastructure network where I have different subcatchments that are routed to different catch basins or manholes, as well as the uh, stormwater mains or conduits that are in this part of the system. In the downstream end of the system, I do have a 2D component of this model. So you can see my mesh grid here. And what this mesh grid is going to allow us to do is map the overland flooding components in a flooding scenario where this 1D system might be surcharging or if we're modeling a sort of rain on mesh type of event, uh, we'll see where that overland flow gets routed to. The other component that this model has is a riverine component. So you can see here my cross sections of this river reach that borders my city. And so if this river overtops, it can interact with the 2D zone, which can also interact with our one dimensional pipe flow. And so this is an example of a rather advanced infrastructure master plan that can really accurately model how these different flow types are interacting and get a clear picture of the flood risks in your city. Now, the reason a city might have a stormwater master plan like this is to, of course, plan for future development and not only evaluate the flood risk currently in the system, but evaluate flood risks that may happen as a result of new development. So in today's hypothetical situation, we're going to be looking at a proposed new housing development that's coming in at this upstream end of the system. The developer has the engineering consultancy that's helping design this new development, has used info drainage to complete the stormwater master plan for those construction permitting purposes. And so we're going to show how to tie that info drainage model 
into our existing city's master plan. So let's take a look at that info drainage model. You can see this housing development has been split up into sub catchments. I have my inlets set up here that these catchments are draining to. I have a pipe network set up. Uh, and over here, you can see also that I've brought in shape files representing my city's master plan. Uh, so if I zoom out, obviously on a much larger scale, right, this is just one housing development and this is an entire city and an entire watershed. Uh, but you could see I've brought in shape files representing the subcatchments of that area as well as uh, the node locations in that master plan. So if I go to this outfall location, S17, if I move that over, you can see that this is where we're going to be tying into the city's system. Now the first thing to do is, of course, just save this model file. Note the name of that model file and where it's saved. And we'll just go ahead and directly import that into our existing model. So the easiest way to do that is to go to Network, Import, Model, Info Drainage Data. Let's go ahead and select that file. We'll press open and that import process will begin. Once that import process has been completed, this results of info drainage import window will pop up. Now, it is important to note here that a lot of different scenarios were imported. And that is because in my info drainage file, I have a lot of different scenarios. Uh, this import process, it'll import all of the scenarios in the info drainage file, whether or not they're active. So even though I only have one active file in here, meaning only one phase that will run if I went and ran an analysis, the info drainage import imported all of them. Uh, but we do get a summary of what comes in with each of those. So total number of nodes, manholes, outfalls, etc. cetera. Uh, but it has also created new scenarios in my stormwater master plan file. So this is important to note. It would probably behoove us as the city engineers who are responsible for maintaining these models to delete out any unused phases in the info drainage file before importing into InfoWorks ICM just for data management and data cleanliness. So let's take a look at what came over from that info drainage model. Uh, again, making sure I'm in the scenario that I want to be in. Uh, if I zoom into that upstream node here, I can see my info drainage model was brought in with the catchment areas, with those manholes and pipes. If I go to the properties here, you can see that most of this critical information has been carried over from that info drainage file. Uh, and if you are looking for specifics as to what information carries over exactly and what gets mapped for each of these different model types. Here I'm just in the ICM help file and I can go to this import info drainage data window, which I got to just by searching info drainage data uh, in the search file. Here are tables of everything that comes over and exactly what it's mapped to and exceptions. Uh, so this is a great reference to have in terms of seeing exactly how that information is going to be transferred to your ICM model. Now, if I zoom in here, I can actually see that we're not quite connected to our ICM model. In the info drainage file, I just had a shape file of the InfoWorks ICM data, so I knew I was close, but obviously couldn't connect it to my ICM model within info drainage. So we're just going to replace this reconnect this and actually connect it to our existing ICM model here. So what I'll do, first I'll just get the name of this node, TO909A, I'll copy it. And then we'll go to these this conduit properties here. I'm just gonna copy, paste the downstream node there. Get rid of this outfall node that we don't need anymore. And now we are connected to our ICM model. 
So let's talk about the second way that we can get info drainage information into an InfoWorks ICM model. Now, while it's nice to use that import, it's very direct, it's very quick, it's very easy, and we get all of that data, the actual nodes and links directly within our ICM model, uh, there might be a few different reasons why we don't want to do this. So first of all, it could be that the private developer is in charge of maintaining this infrastructure and the city or the agency that owns this master plan is not necessarily concerned with modeling these small individual subcatchments and these small individual catch basins and stormwater pipes. Additionally, master drainage plans often have pretty specific scopes. And what I mean by that is that there might be minimum subcatchment areas. And again, we're not really concerned with the nitty gritty details of all the individual happenings within the subdevelopment. And rather, we're more interested in sort of a more generalized idea of what is this new development doing as a whole. So this might all be represented as one subcatchment. And again, it just might not be within the scope of the master drainage plan to have this subdivided and as granular as we're seeing here. The other reason why we might not want to import directly from info drainage and tie that into the system uh, is to preserve exactly the info drainage model results. So what I mean here is that this is an InfoWorks ICM network that is using the proprietary ICM engine, whereas InfoDrainage uses a SWIM5 engine. So I'm not going to get into the differences between the SWIM5 engine and the ICM engine in today's discussion. We do have an older water talk that goes into depth there if you are interested. Uh, but ultimately, they are different engines, and so we can expect some small differences between, for example, the outflow calculated in our original info drainage model and the uh, inflow that would be calculated at this connecting node once we tied that info drainage model into the system. Again, it's probably going to be pretty small. It depends on what you have going on in your info drainage model. But again, we might just want to sort of for data integrity state, we might just want to take the outfall hydrograph from our info drainage model and just plug that hydrograph directly into our ICM model. So what I'm going to do is just go back to our base scenario here. I'm going to head and make a copy of this and we'll call it base with info drainage development. I'm going to add a note here too that added outfall hydrograph from info drainage sub development model. Okay. Now that we have this new phase created, I'm going to go ahead and add an inflow. So the way to do that, right click on our model group, new info works inflow. I'm going to title this info drainage outfall. Another name could be the name of the housing development. Uh, you can get a little more descriptive here. Uh, now to actually import the data from this, First, we have to export that data from info drainage. So if I go back to my info drainage model that I've run here and I go to my junction results, this is the outflow hydrograph from that outfall. I'm going to export this to a CSV, give it a name. I've already done this once, so I'll just kind of save over that, that S17 outfall hydrograph total outflow. Save. Sure, we can go ahead and replace that. Now back in ICM, let's import that. Import from generic CSV file. This is not formatted as an ICM uh, CSV. Go ahead and click on that here. And then we'll just sort of step through a mapping process uh, to configure this CSV file. So we'll go ahead and use set times here. Uh, the time step, as we can see, is actually five minutes instead of 15 minutes. Uh, then we're going to set the first cell. First, we'll change the units to CFS. Set this first cell equal to B1. This is actually the flow data here. It is reading two different time series. It's not reading this as my time. It's reading, again, just sort of two different values here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this second time series. We only want to import this column. Then I'll press OK. 
And I can, of course, save that configuration. Uh, so anytime I import from Info Drainage, I can save that. Uh, but if I open this info value here, we can see that hydrograph loaded. Now I need to point to where this hydrograph is going to be applied in my model. So if I go back to the Greenville model here and select on this node, let's see, T09009A. Uh, actually, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and open up the properties of this node. I'm just going to copy and paste the name so I don't have to remember it. Control C. Go to Info Drainage Outfall. Uh, now, this is something that evaded me for a while to direct this inflow and actually apply it to a specific node. I'll go to Profile Properties, paste that value and give this again a more descriptive title here. So this is inflow from info drainage model. And now that inflow is applied to my info drainage or for my InfoWorks ICM model here. And so that concludes today's workflow. We demonstrated how you can quickly and seamlessly update your municipality's stormwater master network with new development information using that model import from info drainage data. Uh, we also showed how you can import that information by copying the hydrograph out of info drainage and applying that to an inflow in ICM at a specific node. Of course, we also kind of talked about just being able to demonstrate those impacts on existing infrastructure, as well as some ways to keep track of where updates to your stormwater network are coming from. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Water Drops.